Today we're going to take a look at the Ford Mustang Mach-E Rally, a rally-inspired version of the Ford Mustang Mach-E that Ford introduced this past Friday at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in West Sussex, England. The interesting thing about this vehicle is Ford is going to make it available for sale in both the US and Europe, unlike the Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400, which was a prototype race car that they developed a few years ago in collaboration with RTR. It was built off a Mustang Mach-E GT body in white, and the prototype had 1400 peak horsepower. It ran a quarter mile in 10.4 seconds. However, that was a one-off, unlike the Mustang Mach-E Rally that Ford is introducing now. Now, I don't have have a lot of information about the Mustang Mach-E Rally. Ford hasn't released specifications or anything like that yet, but I did get the opportunity to talk with Darren Palmer, Ford Model E's Vice President of Electric Vehicle Operations, to ask me a few questions about the new Mustang Mach-E Rally. So let's jump over to that interview and see what Darren has to say about this new vehicle Ford's going to be offering. All right, so I'm here today with Darren Palmer, Vice President of Electric Vehicle Programs for Ford Model E. And Darren has a pretty interesting announcement for us today, something that I didn't see coming. Uh, I'll let you uh, make the announcement, Darren. What do you got for us? Thank you. Good to see you again. So today we're announcing the Mac E Rally, a Rally Cross inspired version of the Mac E. Um, we're going to show it this year at Goodwood and uh, show it for the first time. And we're going to have a lot of fun driving it up the hill. Sounds like fun. Uh, can, can, can I come over and drive it up the hill? Yeah, we, we can come over. I'll <laughs> see what we can rate. <laughs> Maybe later. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think I'm probably qualified to do it. I'm a pretty good driver, but uh, I have a feeling for this, this specific vehicle, I might be a little out of my class. Um, so t tell me, how did this come about? Um, what made, what inspired you guys to make a vehicle like this? Well, um, as you probably know, and uh, you, many of your viewers know, we formed a team called the Always On Team when we launched Mustang Mach-E and all of our EVs because now we like to keep them updated continuously. So we're always looking for development. We used to develop a car then doing mid-cycle action three years later. Now we have an Always On Team. So one of the team members is really into Rallycross, and they sketched out a proposal themselves and we showed it to Doug Field and he showed it to Jim Farley and they kicked the project off really the same day. So it's been a high speed development project. And it's actually going to launch um, spring next year. Wow. Wow. And this is a different type of electric vehicle. You haven't really entered this space yet. It's interesting that you're choosing to do that. Are there reasons behind that? Do you hope to learn things for future iterations of other vehicles or do you just want to have some fun with this kind of vehicle? Well, it really intrigued us. We have a long history of rallying and uh, from my time in the UK as well, uh, a lot of people love that. And um, we, when we saw this proposal, we said, I wonder how that would feel. What, what would that be like? So a vehicle with more capability off the road as well as on and at a higher speed. So imagine gravel roads or uh, looser road tracks. How might a vehicle like a Mac E perform in that? way when you modify it to be like a rally car and that's what we tried out so we just tried it out we have a lot of models about how a gas vehicle will perform but there's a lot less about how electric performed so we formed the mules and the team have been having a lot of fun playing with those versus some very um let's say hero rally cars from the past they've been driving those as well and seeing what makes those so special and then comparing it to what we can do with electric and we're learning a lot again that instant talk an ability to move it around the wheels in, in a millisecond is making a huge difference. It makes the car really fun, and it means you can program certain software things in that make it even more fun. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think the general public will embrace electric motorsports as much as they do combustion? Because I think part of the experience is that crazy, loud, audible interaction you get with motorsports. Do you think that EVs are going to get that same amount of attention? Well, it's, they, they're, they're just different. It's an extra, it's like an electric dirt bike 
versus a gas dirt bike. They both have their attributes and they're different, but that performance you get from EVs is pretty compelling. Um, so we, the team have been having great fun. There's some people in the team who are very experienced in gas and they didn't know how they would like it. But once they start throwing it around a track and they have a level of control they never had before, then they start to enjoy a different side of it. So like, like with gas and electric, I think there's a space for both of these. Um, and it definitely has some attributes that are over and above what a gas can do. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess maybe the biggest challenge is longevity, uh, like how long it can go at it with, with, with the battery. I know with Formula E, that's a big concern. You know, you've got to make the battery last the race. You've got to figure out how to, you know, how much regen to apply and when you can go all out and when you, when you have to cut back a little bit. I mean, all racing has been that way. Like you've got to save your tires, but now it's adding another element with the battery. Uh, you know, how do you balance how much battery versus how much range you need for like this type of, you know, um, all terrain driving racing. Yeah. So we, again, we've been experimenting in all forms of, uh, off road for electric, um, now, and we're finding, uh, it wasn't quite as we modeled it. There's certain instances like very deep sand that really saps power, but a lot of instances in off road are slower. And actually, we're finding out, um, you know, I recently had a drive and my body can't take more than the car can. So by the time I looked at I'd had enough and I look at how much range had been used, it was a lot less than I expected. So it depends on exactly what you're doing with it. Um, this really was showing an inspiration for a car that's going to be a production car. Um, and, you know, you can have quite a lot of fun in, in the battery and the time that you've got available to you. And now, as you know, we've got a huge charging network. So you'll be able to charge the vehicle up quite easily in many places uh, directly after you've uh, had your fun off road as well. So um, we're learning a lot about this as we go through. Right. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're gonna buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. And I love Mustang mach -E. I think it's a fantastic car. The one, in my opinion, Achilles heel it has, and I'm not the only person, other people have mentioned this, is um, thermal management. When you really hammer it, when you're on a track, when you're, when you're just ripping it, electric vehicles, many of them, some of them handle it better than others. I found that was one of, uh, if you're going to give the Mustang Mach-E GT a weakness, it will derate power once you're really, you know, hammered it. You do a couple of laps, now all of a sudden you're not getting the full power, which is not what you want. With a vehicle like this, are you spending a lot of time on that specific aspect? Are you learning things that maybe will transition into regular mach -E's? Uh, You know, I, I'd like to talk a little, learn a little bit about, you know, how you guys are dealing with thermal management. Yes, we are. So our always on team are looking at every aspect of the car. There's a lot of software development. And, you know, I think, you know, we listen to, social media and our customers every day. It's the first thing we do every day. So we know about every issue that any customer will raise and, and we're working on all of those. But of course, improving charging times is a key one and you'll see that we have an LFP derivative coming out just now and that has improved charging times. We know how important that is. Um, and also learning about how the battery is responding because you don't have a thermocouples and sensors on every single part of the system and you have to assume some of it. To, and protect some parts of the system. So as you get more of the um, experience with the car, you're able to raise some of those limits. And one of them is the limit we wanted to raise on some of the uh, um, throttling on the GT. So it's got a net fantastic zero to 60 time, but we do throttle after a certain period of time, um, the power to the wheels. So we, we're, that is something we can control over the air and we are gonna change that limit. And that we've done that on testing to make sure the vehicle lasts the way it is expected for the customers. Because as you know, we offer a long warranty and a guarantee of the charge hold of the battery of the vehicle for eight years. So we've got to make sure that the vehicle performs exactly as a customer would expect and we don't compromise any of that. But that's all controllable by software. So we're working on all of, all of those and we're issuing software updates regularly to customers to improve it. Absolutely. Um, good to hear. So. Um, Regular Maki, -E, uh, you're ramping up production. I do. We did an article on Inside EVs about that recently. Um, you're starting to really hit your stride with Maki. -E. 
Uh, is that um, is, are things going along as planned? Are the uh, your your sales progressing as Ford hoped? Uh, there's a lot of stiff competition out there. You know, I don't want to mention the the T in the in, in in the room, but they've been very aggressive with their pricing, and you've got vehicles that kind of line up close to theirs. Um, uh, how's Machi been doing sales wise? Is is has that been uh, to what your expectations or hopes were? Well, Machi has been constrained since we launched until really coming up now. So it's always been only order and it took some time to get one. And it's been that ever since we launched it because, well, we miscalled the volume level. So uh, we, and we started putting it in as, the minute we knew. So now that's just coming online um, and we're gonna have really two thirds more of them. Um, and so along with that, we're, mon we're monitoring the market and watching uh, what all of our competition are doing and, and working out where we go. It's a very popular vehicle. It's got a really good following of people that love it. And it's a distinctly different vehicle to other competitors. So some customers are going to love that, that version. We're also, we brought the LFP battery in, which brings a huge cost reduction in and allows us to offer new pricing. So we got new pricing really just in the last few weeks uh, down to $475 lease. Um, which is a fantastic um, entry price for a car like this. So that's going to, I believe, going to give accessibility of the car to many, many more people. And we're going to have a lot more of those available now. And they're just, they're really starting to come through in the next couple of months. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, feeling very, very positive about that. The car gets great feedback. Excellent. Well, listen, um, I know we can't, we don't have any specifications out yet on the rally car. I'm so looking forward to hear all about that and how well that vehicle performs. Um, but I appreciate you coming on here today. Uh, thanks a lot. And good luck uh, with uh, Mach-E, Lightning, the whole uh, Model E line. And uh, thanks for coming on today, Darren. Thank you. I can't wait for you all to try it. It is the most fun uh, to drive this vehicle. So, And we've got lots to share about it, of the different things it does. Well, Thank you so much for the time. Let's get that arranged. <laughs> I'll be happy to hop behind the wheel with that. Maybe bring along uh, my podcast buddy, Kyle. I'm sure I'm sure he'd love to get behind the wheel of it also. Yeah, but, uh, we'll have to get it ready for him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Darren, thanks a lot and uh, good luck. Thank you. Okay, so we don't know a lot about the Mustang Mach-E rally yet. Unfortunately, Ford's holding back on giving us all those really juicy details, horsepower, torque, battery size, all that stuff. But I am excited to see that Ford is taking their electric vehicle program into motorsports. You know, the uh, Mach-E 1400 was one thing that was a one-off race car just to kind of show what the possibilities were. But now this is going to be a vehicle that Ford sells to retail customers. So it's going to be really interesting. I'm really interested in seeing if Ford has improved the uh, thermal management system to the point where it can keep the things cool so the vehicle doesn't derate. That's one of the problems that the Mustang Mach-E and the Mach-E GT has is if you really take that thing on a track and start thrashing it around, it doesn't take long before it hits its thermal limits and starts cutting back on the power. So it's really interesting to see what Ford's done with the Mustang Mach-E rally and if it's made improvements in that area. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.